you're looking at a simulation of crustal slip. Now the reason we're beginning with this is because tonight we're going to discuss Charles Hutchinson Hapgood, an American college professor and author who became one of the best known advocates for the pseudo-archaeological claim of rapid and recent pole shift with catastrophic results, the crustal slip hypothesis. Now this illustration may be fanciful, but it may also be factual. Not in the sense that you just viewed, and we will get to that. But let's talk about who the person Charles Hutchinson Hapgood was. He was born May 17, 1904, and died December 21, 1982. He was an American college professor and author who became one of the best-known advocates of this pseudo-archaeological claim of rapid and recent pole shift with catastrophic results. Now, Hapgood received his master's degree from Harvard in 1929 in medieval and modern history. His Ph.D. work on the French Revolution was interrupted by the Great Depression. He taught for a year in Vermont and directed a community center in Provincetown, also serving as executive secretary of Franklin Roosevelt's Crafts Commission. Now, after this, or shortly before Velikovsky published Worlds in Collision, and during World War II, Hapgood was employed by the Office of Strategic by the Office of Coordinator of Information, the Office of the Coordinator of Information, which was headed by General William J. Donovan. The Office of the Coordinator of Information. Doesn't that sound fraudulent? That's because it was. The Office of the Coordinator of Information was an intelligence and propaganda agency of the United States government. And we're going to get back to that because the current CIA is the same group, the same intelligence and propaganda agency formed July 11th, 1941 by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who, by the way, Hapgood was his right-hand man. Are you picking it up? Now, the Office of Coordinator of Information, or the COI, became the Office of Strategic Services in 1942. Yeah. I'm not even making this up. It was a wartime intelligence and propaganda agency of the United States during World War II. And he then served Hapgood as a liaison officer to the White House and became one of the first members of the CIA ever. Now, why is this important? <laughs> well, because Hapgood is involved in one of the biggest disinformation campaigns in history, which started shortly after his work with the CIA. Now, he went back into academia and continued to publish books. Now, Professor Hapgood created the theory of crustal slip documented three crust displacements in the last 100,000 years. Some researchers believe that they happen every 41,000 years and that the last one happened 11,500 years ago. Hapgood believes that this cataclysmic shift is caused by an imbalance of ice at the polar caps. And over time, ice builds up at the poles, reaching as much as two miles thick from the Arctic Circle and became temperate. The tremendous weight of the ice causes an imbalance in the globe, and the ice shifts, dragging the outer crust and the continents in one piece to a new position. Now, this all stemmed from the work of Hugh Auchincloss Brown. Because while at Springfield College, a student questioned about the lost continent of Mu or Atlantis prompted a class project to investigate that very same topic. Hapgood would then investigate possible ways that massive earth changes could occur 
exposing him to the literature of Hugh Atkinson and Klaus Brown. Now, Hugh Brown was an electrical engineer best known for advancing the theory of catastrophic pole shift. But Brown's claim to fame that the accumulation of ice at the geographical poles called, caused a recurring tipping of the axis in cycles of four to 7,500 years couldn't be further from the truth. But it was a great idea. And like all science has spawned new ideas, like the crustal slip hypothesis. Now, this simulation you're looking at is fanciful because it simply slows down the crust and then it starts to slip while the Earth continues to spin. And what it's depicting is that the asthenosphere layer right below the crust, let's say 60 to 150 kilometers down, that plastic zone would lose friction and the crust would slip in a haphazard way. But the data, the geologic data, does not support this, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, the geologic data does not support Hapgood's theory of earth crust displacement, nor Hutchinson, or whatever that guy's name was. What's his name? Auchenklaus Brown. Hugh Auchenklaus Brown, as well as Hapgood, are probably wrong. In theory, partially, not completely, because I believe that there is crustal displacement. I believe that the theory of plate tectonics is wrong, and it's more of a catastrophic effect on those plate boundaries. There is slow slip movement in the quiescent times that we can show, but there's also rapid movement during times of crustal slip. Now, what is this crustal slip and what does it mean? And where did they come up with the idea? And where is the data? Well, the data comes from a series of two maps. And you're looking at the first of them. So the, these are the two main maps um, that Hutch, uh, <laughs> Hapgood and Auklusen. <laughs> God, what is his name? I'll never remember it. There he is. Hugh Achenkloss. Well, let's get back, back to the maps. So you have the Pira Rees map. And you have the map of the ancient sea kings. Which has another name. The Orontes Fine or the Orontes Phineas map. So we're looking at the Orontes Phineas map. Which seems to show Antarctica ice free. And the Pira Rees map seems to show Antarctica ice free with people and other stuff going on along the shore. So it begs to question how sailors in 1500 could come in possession of such maps if at that time Antarctica was in fact completely covered in miles of ice, which it should have been. And then we come to the work of Mario Bildreps, who literally took the declination of all the megalithic structures worldwide and just pointed them around Google Earth. And what he showed was that there's one, two, three, four, five polar positions that these megaliths are revealing. And that lost civilizations and crustal shifts are the only evidence. And that the orientation of pyramids and other megaliths correlates with these crustal slips. And I want you to come check out this data. All the links will be below. So what Mario is suggesting is the same thing that the others were suggesting almost a hundred up to 100 years ago. That these crustal slips happen. But not in the way that this visualization is showing. Because the visualization just shows, <clears throat> and I quote myself, that as the magnetic reversal slows the earth, which we're living now, the rotation will slow. 
and that friction will release the crust and a slippage will occur because of the weight of the plate here. The ice will cause it to slip the ice towards the equator and equilibrate that spin. That's the whole idea of the ice weighing down the earth, which may be why the globalists want you to think that there's no ice up there or down there, however you want to look at it. Plenty of ice on Antarctica currently. <clears throat> but the reference line and what Mario found was that all of the ancient poles, here's the current pole, the last one was in Greenland, which makes sense why there's still ice there, it's still melting. And the other poles were further and further south, but they're all on a single line. So for some reason, the crust only slips in this direction. Which, because we don't know anything, makes sense to me because there's still no explanation for why that occurs. Which makes it more and more intriguing as the investigation continues. Check out Mario Build Up Reps. Check out all the science that I've showed you and shared with you. And there will be several more parts to this update as we get towards LeakCon, Gaia, April 4th, 2020 where the entire presentation will be unleashed before your very eyes. And in the next part, we'll be talking about the Adam and Eve story and Chan Thomas and how it all fits together with the Office of Strategic Services to the CIA. Are you ready to pick it up? Because we're putting it down.